Hello, my name is Edwin Rutsch and I'm the director of the Empathy Center located here in beautiful Santa Barbara, California. The center's mission is to build the empathy movement and to raise the level of empathy in society through education and community building initiatives. And my name is Anita Novak. I teach at McGill University and I'm the author of Purposeful Empathy, a book that invites readers to turn up the volume of empathy in their lives. And at the beginning of 2024, Anita and I co-hosted the Empathy Summit uh, brought to you by the Empathy Center and more than 40 authors of books about empathy participated. They shared what their book was about, why they were motivated to write it, and what they hope readers will take away. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you'll buy their book. And now it gives me great pleasure to welcome Carla McLaren, who is an award-winning author, social science researcher, educator, and a workplace consultant. She is the founder of uh, and CEO of Emotional Dynamics, Emotion Dynamics, and the Empathy Academy. And she is also the author of The Art of Empathy, A Complete Guide to Life's Most Essential Skill, another great book. Over to you, Carla. Thanks so much, Anita. And it was so nice to hear Dr. Lanzoni's work because when I went, empathy, the art of empathy is an older book. It, I went back to grad school to have access to research so I could write it. And it came out in 2013. So it's a thousand years old in, in dog years. Um, but what I brought to it that's different is I am a hyper empathic person who has learned to live in this world. And what I wanted to do was create a model based on the research that helped me create a big tent empathy that didn't um, hyper focus on hyper empathic people, but that welcomed what I call the exiles of empathy, which is men and boys autistic people for sure. And people with the conditions of, um, narcissistic uh, injury, um, psychopathy, and sociopathy, because the idea that these people are unempathic is in itself unempathic, right? It is unempathic to exile people from empathy. So I wanted a model that could, that could capture everyone and help people understand empathy as a process rather than this magical blah that comes into you from the cosmos, that it is a a human skill. Uh, it is part of what makes us human, but it is also a skill and a trait of any social animal, right? So it's not sort of metaphysical. I came up through the metaphysical community and I was an empath. I was one of the proto empaths. And I, and I, and I learned over time that this is, um, and I apologize if there are other empaths here or self-proclaimed empaths here, but I realized it was unethical to call myself an empath because as soon as that happens, then here's all the non-empaths. Here's all the people who are not as special as I am. And I realized that, that just ethically and morally, I could no longer be a part of that whole ideology. So the art of empathy, um, I started looking into where is this word empathy from? I thought it came from the Latin. I thought it came in with sympathy and, you know, apathy and antipathy, but no, it came in from the German language and Dr. Lanzoni talked about it from the concept of Einfühlung, which is a group of German artists trying to figure out how do I, Gustav Klimt, put paint on a dead piece of canvas in the 1890s? And how does Carla, long after I'm dead, bring what I had meant to, 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 to convey into her body? What in the heck is happening in Einfühlung? And that's where the word empathy came from. It came into the English language in 1908. So it is a fairly new concept. And when I understood Einfühlung, then I, I could welcome everyone in. I could welcome my autistic friends who are so hyper empathic that they are overwhelmed by 
everything that's coming in and a part of uh, autism is sometimes having trouble um, organizing it. So any of us has had the experience of being so overwhelmed by what's coming in that you just need to shut down. And a lot of the behaviors that we see that are called unempathic are actually most often a hyper empathic person with no skills and no grounding underneath them in burnout. So, so this large empathy tent is, is what I focused on. I also focused on how to create what I call an empathic terrarium for people who are hyper empathic or hypo empathic. How do you create a life around yourself and skills beneath you so that you are not sort of laying on a couch with a cool cloth over your head for the rest of your life? What I want is empathic people to go out as if, as if they're playing a game of Red Rover and throw themselves at the world, not throw themselves away, as if someone's continually calling them over. Uh, if I were going to rewrite this book, I would call it empathic badassery, because I want, we need empathic people out there, but if they have no skills and no grounding and no terrarium and no understanding of what's happening with their empathy, they're just going to burn out. And who needs that? No, none of us need that. So I wanted to show you my model um, quickly. I've got four minutes and I'm going to share my screen. This is my six essential aspects of empathy model. And it starts here at emotion contagion and goes to perceptive engagement. But I love this idea that you need to tune them. You need to understand what's happening when you are empathizing or what's happening when you're over empathizing and when you're under empathizing. So emotion contagion is first because empathy is first and foremost an emotional skill. You have to understand that there is an emotion or a situation that is calling to you. That's first. If you miss that, and if you, if you don't realize something's happening, your empathy will sort of end right there because you're not even on the same page. The second is empathic accuracy. And that means you know what's going on. In terms of emotion, you know what emotion it is, what that emotion does, and how that emotion works. The third is emotion regulation. You need to know how to regulate your emotions. A lot of people, when they come to me for dealing with hyper empathy, they say, how can I stop feeling the emotions of others? And my question is, why do you want to stop feeling emotions? They are essential to our cognition, essential to our social awareness. They help us make meaning. They are the tools of empathy. And so learning how to work with emotions and understand them is a key. If you can't regulate emotions, you're probably gonna stop right there. The next is perspective taking. Your capacity to understand this is me, this is you. I'm feeling a bit of sadness, maybe some happiness. You are feeling depression. We are different people, but I can take your perspective because I know what those emotions are. I've lived in this world. The fifth is concern for others. You have to care. And when people call someone unempathic, it is this concern for others and this perspective taking areas that they're calling out. So there are exercises and skills and practices for each one of these so that you can either increase or decrease each of the five uh, aspects of empathy that lead to per perceptive engagement. Each of these can happen in a split second and each of these can, can stop and make it so that you cannot function empathically. You cannot engage perceptively because these other building blocks of full-scale empathy uh, have not kicked in for whatever reason. It's not that you're broken, it's that you don't understand the model and you don't have the support you need to function as a highly empathic person, yeah? So that is my, that is my contribution to uh, empathy uh, in this world. And uh, I would hope that we can go forward with empathic badassery and, <laughs> and understand that empathy is a human skill. It's a skill that many animals have, and there's nothing special about it. Um, 
if we treat it as special, we may lose our way. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Carla. Uh, I, I think Empathy Badassery is a very, very good name. <laughs> I see people cheering in the background. That's funny. Oh, thank you so much for being here.